Hello, thanks for tuning in for another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my long-term review of the Z Fold 4. So I had the Z Fold 4 since it was first released in August of uh, 2022, and I've used the phone every day uh, since I got it. There are a couple of frequent questions that people ask before buying uh, the Fold 4, so I hope to answer that in today's video. I'll also discuss my experience with the phone and how I use it and see if that's of any help to you. I'll finish with some recommendations and let you know if I think the Fold 4 is still worth buying today. So let me know in the comments if I miss anything, uh, but remember to be nice, I have very thin skin. First off, for something that's not discussed and probably enough, the Fold 4 is IPX8 rated. Most uh, flagship phones, and most phones for that matter, are IP68 rated or IP68. That means uh, the first number is for the dust resistance and the last number is for the water resistance. So the Fold 4 is IPX8, meaning there is no dust resistance at all. So be careful if you're in a dusty environment. Uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend taking this phone to the beach, uh, but that's, you know, completely up to you. But just keep in mind, there is no dust resistance at all on this, and that's probably due to the hinge. And if the dust gets in the hinge, uh, that might cause some issues. The next big thing is the crease. So uh, I'll just try to hold it in here and find it. I uh, really can't see it that great on the video, but uh, the crease is definitely there. You could definitely feel it. You definitely see it. Uh, but on day-to-day -day usage, I really notice it and it doesn't bother me. If I'm watching a movie or playing a game or something like that, it really it just kind of disappears into the background. If you're looking at websites or PDFs or something like that and you're reading something, you might notice it a little bit more, but still really not an issue at all. Again, it's there, you can feel it, and if you know you hold it at the right angle with the light, you, you'd see it a little bit more, but it really has not been an issue for me at all. So, uh, the crease is right here, but uh, with the software that Samsung has here, you take the S-Pen and just draw across, it really, you feel the dip when you go in there, but you know, you can draw straight lines right across there and it's not bothered at all. And also you have this big real estate here. So on the Note uh, series phones, uh, even when you had the S Pen, uh, you know, sometimes the screen was a little tight and cramped. And also the, the S Pen was actually much smaller. This is actually like a real pen that you'd hold, very comfortable to hold and write anything. And I'll just show you here. Let me show you how great the uh, text recognition on here is and how easy it is to take notes on this. Um, going right across the um, crease there. No problem, you know, the text recognizes it perfectly. You got this big space to write. You could also, um, if you want, you could write on, uh, just take, you know, notes like this, and you could actually also have this translated into uh, text after you write it. And I do whole, have a whole video on that, how to use the S Pen and all the features of it, but really awesome stuff. And uh, really, you could mock up a PDF file on here. You could import something, a picture and photo, and write on it. It's a really a lot of powerful stuff that you could do with this. So that's how the S Pen works on this uh, big screen here. So if you want to hear more about that, uh, go ahead and look at the uh, video right up here. Now also, uh, keep in mind, which is kind of a, a calamity here, there is no S Pen uh, support on the front cover. So, uh, you know, sometimes I have the S Pen, I have cases with the S Pen on it, and uh, you write something, you, you want to pull it out and write something here just to jot down a note or a phone number or something like that. It doesn't work. You got to open up the screen. That's the only disadvantage of this. Maybe on the Fold 5, they will have the uh, front screen uh, be S Pen compatible. We'll see. So, another big thing that people uh, might complain about or have questions about is the front camera. There is a camera right over here. Uh, on the video, you really can't see it that well. In real life, you could see it. It's there if you look for it, but honestly, um, it hasn't bothered me at all. I don't even uh, think about it at all. Even when I'm looking up here to see the battery percentage or something like that, this really never even enters my uh, field of view. It really doesn't bother me at all. If you're watching videos or doing anything on the phone, or you just, it really is not even uh, noticeable at all. Uh, again, if you look for it, you can find it and you can see where it is, but otherwise, it's really not a big issue for me. Now, I would probably just have them take out the camera because I, I don't use it at all. But the, the goal of this was to have a camera in here so that if you're doing Zoom calls or video chats or something like that, you could be using the big screen and seeing the other person, and then they could actually also see you. So that's why they have it, but I don't use it, and it really hasn't bothered me uh, being up there at all. The other big question with this phone is the durability. Uh, it is a $1,800 phone if you buy it, buy it at full retail. So uh, I'm probably a little more gentle with it than I would be with my candy bar phones. Um, I usually do have a case on it, but I've had no issues at all with it. Um, no scratches. No, the hinge works just fine. Uh, it did fall once onto concrete, but I will blame the case that I had that it was very slippery. And uh, the case did protect it for the most part, and it's, it's been working fine since then. So it hasn't fa fallen since then. And again, I'm a little more careful with it, but it works just fine. The hinge has been uh, great. Uh, you know, I mean, you can put it in any position and it will stay there with no problem. A lot of times what I do with this thing, 
you know, if I'm looking at a video or something, I just open it up like this, and now it's uh, got its own stand, and you can watch a video, do whatever you want there. It's really nice and convenient. Also, you could, you know, fold it this way and have the uh, top half be your screen that you're watching. Then you could be taking notes down here or reading comments on YouTube or something like that. So it is very functional, and again, the hinge is, is perfect. It opens up, you know, all the way like it did when, it, <laughs> when I first got it. Uh, it lays flat here. It works just perfectly. So the front screen, I don't have any screen protector on here. And uh, if you're really hot on the phone, you might want to get one. But uh, the front glass here is Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. So it's pretty durable. If you have the Fold 4, you already know this. But if you're thinking about getting one, uh, I'll just tell you now. Uh, most cases come in two parts. There's a front that clips on the front, then a back piece that clips back here. But uh, none of them, cover, or very few of them, cover the hinge. And uh, that kind of leaves the hinge exposed here. So you got to just be a little careful with that. I do have a new uh, case that I just got. And I uh, been using i got it a little, a little while ago um and i will do a video on that and it has a front and back cover but it is one piece and it covers uh, the hinge completely and it actually has a holder for the s pen so if you're interested in that uh, please subscribe and i'll put the video up here when i uh, release it and uh, turn on your notifications and uh, if you're not so interested you can still subscribe i probably have some video that you might like eventually so back to our discussion so uh, the cases do come in two parts and I usually just keep the back part on and I uh, haven't had the front part on here so there's no bezel or anything like that and uh, the screen is still held up perfectly well there's no scratches at all on it I mean I looked at it before I did the video there's nothing going on there so a really durable screen there if you want to uh, put a screen protector on it uh, you know feel free if you are hard on phones and you're a little cautious about it uh, feel free to put that on there now the only thing uh, to keep in mind with that is um, I use the phone like this and then when I open it I'm using the phone like this and I'm usually holding it honestly um, but there is could be an issue if you're putting it flat on the table because if you put it flat on the table this part will be on the table and if you're kind of moving it around or uh, you know scratching it or writing on it or you know swiping and doing something and pushing on it uh, you could scratch the phone a little easier so if that's your gig and you like uh, laying this flat on you know on a kind of surface then I'll just be a little cautious with that front screen especially if you're not putting a case on it if you're putting a case on it all the cases have a little front bezel on there that will protect the screen uh, but uh, if not then again just be a little extra cautious with it so when it's closed, this is actually fairly durable. Again, you got the uh, Victus Plus on the front and the back here. I believe this is aluminum on the side. And uh, the hinge here is very durable, very, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't give at all when you're pushing on it. Uh, if, 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 you lay, if it falls and lands on it, it will scratch it and scuff it a little bit, but, uh, you know, it still should be pretty functional. And again, the glass on here is uh, just as strong as any other glass that's out there on any other phone. So uh, this is fairly durable like this. But the main reason you buy this thing is the inside. So let's open it up. This screen is definitely a little more fragile, but it, it's held up great. I mean, I use the S Pen on it all the time. I'm, you know, fooling around with it and uh, swiping and doing stuff and, you know, folding and unfolding and all that. And it's been perfect. No issues at all with that. Uh, some people have had some issues with that, so, you know, keep that in mind. And previous generations of folds have had more issues. There is a protective film that's on here that I've saw, seen people take off. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. And, uh, you know, there's some issues where people uh, don't on the crease here. Some people said they had issues with the pixels, a couple of dead pixels here and there, uh, or, you know, the, the protective film coming off in the corner or something. But again, my, my phone's been great, and uh, I've been using it every day since I got it, so no issues at all with it. And I think if you're pretty cautious with it, you should be all right. Um, I actually also do... You know, probably shouldn't, but I kind of wipe this down with alcohol every once in a while um, on the inside, rarely on the inside, because when I'm in a dirty environment, I don't open the phone. But uh, the outside, I kind of wipe down all the time to keep it clean, and uh, it's been just fine. So, and if you are concerned about the durability, especially in the beginning, it might not be a bad idea to get the insurance from uh, Samsung. Uh, it's like $11 a month, and it supposedly covers uh, screen breaks and, you know, if you get any dead pixels or defects or stuff like that. I haven't used it yet or tested it, but supposedly uh, they're pretty good. So what about usability on this? The front screen is very narrow, and uh, the aspect ratio is a little, you know, narrow and a little weird. Uh, it's kind of like a, you know, a little bit wide TV remote control, basically. Um, but I've gotten used to it, uh, and it works out pretty great for just about everything. And one-hand use is very easy on this. Holding it in your hand is very easy, so you do have a pretty good grip on it most of the time. Uh, some of those wide candy bar phones, sometimes they're a little hard to hold. And when I see them now, actually, I, I feel like they're too wide almost. Uh, this is like kind of everything you need uh, to be on here, and it's nice. If you just want to check a text and make a phone call or check something quick, you don't have to open up the whole screen. You could use this and it gets everything done that you want to.
and that's good. Uh, keep in mind, you're going to be using this front screen a lot because, you know, when you're at a stoplight and you want to check something or you're in a grocery store, or again, someone texts you or you're making a phone call, you're not going to be opening this phone up all the time to use something. And a lot of times you probably just have one hand. Again, you're not going to open this up with just one hand and, you know, fooling around with the big screen. So you will be using this front screen, I think, more than most people think they're going to. So the only thing with the narrow screen is sometimes when you're reading like, um, you know, news feeds or, you know, uh, going to certain websites, some things get cut off a little funny. Uh, so I, I'll just show you here. So, uh, you know, this is just Yahoo. And, uh, and you know, you can kind of just see here on a wider phone, you'd get the whole uh, little caption here of what it is. Uh, but on this phone, it's cut off just a little bit. Now, the great thing, though, is if you open the phone. Obviously, you get, you know, the whole screen, you get the, you know, the whole tidbit of the story there and see if you want to read it or, or anything. But the other great thing is, let me just set this up. So if you go here and you can get the desktop view of any website and you could see, you, you could use this. I mean, the, the, everything's right there. You could kind of access everything. You could see everything. And this is great because sometimes websites are not a hundred percent formatted for the mobile version. And sometimes like a little window or a little menu drop box or something like that gets cut off or it's not very usable. So I've had to go into the desktop view and get into something and it just makes it so much easier. So again, this is just a movie from Netflix. Uh, you can see here uh, the crease is there, but you know, it's really not that noticeable. The big thing that bothers me is the shadow boxes on the top and bottom, the big black bars there. That is what disturbs me more. And uh, that's kind of just how a lot of the movies are, or most of the movies. Uh, you could, you know, kind of blow it up and do that, but then the side things get cut off here a little bit. So just to let you, you know, know what's going on with that before you buy it. Okay, the other great thing about this inside panel is uh, being productive and doing a lot of things with the, the split screen. Split screen on this is awesome. So we could do this, and to get another one up here, we just do this, and now we got another screen. Uh, you know, there you got that. And if you don't like the way it's on top and bottom, you can kind of modify that with just hitting this, and it goes side to side there. And then, of course, you could, you know, just adjust this and make it different sizes like that. Another way to get the split screen, you could just do this. I got a bar up here, you just hit that, and now you hit split screen. Now you pick up another another app over here and now you got a split screen that way. Another way to do it, uh, again you have an app open. This is my OnePlus app, Samsung OnePlus app, which is awesome and uh, that really easy makes another split screen if you want to use that. Uh, let's see, what's another way to do it? We could do it with the edge panel here. I have a couple of split screens already locked in here and this you could save these. They could be on top up and down or they could be side to side like this. You just hit it, and now we got uh, another split screen right there. So a bunch of different ways uh, to make the split screen. Okay, and then if you have a split screen open here, right, we got this. So then if you want to do uh, another app here, you just hold it, and you could do a third app on this side, or you could put it on this side. So now you got, you know, split screen plus another, you got three apps running at the same time. Plus I could also just put it right in the middle, and then it will pop up right there, and then this. I can make bigger, smaller. I can make it disappear into a little icon that I could, you know, access as I need to. I can make this, um, I could change the size on this thing. So there's a lot of different things you could do with the split screen. I did a whole video on this where I went into all the different things you could do with the split screen and all the great features that are on the Fold 4. Uh, just so many things you could do. So many, so flexible uh, compared to the, uh, you know, usual uh, candy bar phone. So uh, just so many things you could do with this. And there's a lot of things to learn about it. So awesome stuff. Uh, also, just something, you know, if you have the front screen, uh, if you have, you're looking at something, uh, it goes without saying, if you need to see a caption or some writing that you just need to see a little bit better, you got some older eyes and it's getting a little tough to uh, see, you know, obviously you could blow it up on the screen, but much easier just to open the screen and then, you, you know, you got the whole view there and much easier to see just about everything. Uh, the other big thing with this is the battery. Um, it's good, uh, maybe not great. Um, I won't be happy until the battery lasts all week, but, uh, you know, basically it needs a charge every night. Uh, that's definite. And, uh, but it does get me through the work day with no problem. Even, you know, I mean, five, six hours of screen time. I've seen some people get like nine hours of screen on time, but you know, usually, uh, four to six hours without any problems and I'm coming home and there's, you know, still 20% left. Everybody's different with the battery though. And I do use the battery optimizers that are in the, uh, Samsung, uh, set settings here. Again, I have a video on that. Uh, if you want to find that. The cameras, uh, they're good. You don't buy a Fold phone for the cameras, but they're very good. Uh, they're comparable to the S22. The Fold 4, it has a 50 megapixel main camera. It has the ultra wide lens, and it got upgraded to the three times optical zoom, which I actually kind of like. The two times optical zoom with the Fold 3 just really wasn't uh, enough. So the three times uh, makes things much easier. And I got great pictures with this phone, uh, really good pictures. So no complaints at all with that. So uh, after all this, should you get the Z Fold 4? 
Uh, if price is not an issue, definitely. I mean, the, the fold factor is much better than the candy bar uh, factor. I mean, it's just so versatile. So many different things you can do uh, and you get it and it's just amazing. You know, you sit down to watch a movie or even just kind of read the news or do something or the YouTube videos or whatever. I mean, the biggest screen is just great for, for everything. So great to have this uh, phone like that. And then when you don't need it, I mean, you just got a smaller compact phone that you can carry around with you much easier. It is a little thick, but that's about it. I mean, I have no issues carrying this around, even with the cases on it, uh, and no problems at all with the, you know, the form factor for me. You know, it's, it's a little heavier. Some people may not like that, but I've had no issues with it. If you never had a Fold phone before, I would definitely suggest uh, trying to get into one. Uh, the Fold design now, this is uh, Samsung's fourth iteration of this, and it's gotten refined enough and durable enough that most people use it uh, just like a regular phone. Uh, you know, you could be a little more gentle with it just because it's so darn expensive. But other than that, uh, does everything you want and it's very durable uh, but price is always an issue right i mean the z fold 4 is still very expensive eighteen hundred dollars is a lot for a phone i mean i could buy like you know four laptops for that price but if you look around uh, there should be some discounts coming out now but the fold because the fold 5 will be uh, released soon and as uh, we get closer and closer to the fold 5's release date the fold 4 will be getting more sales and also samsung will be offering uh, better and better uh, trade-ins so uh, look for that and see what happens and then even after the fold 5 gets released then the fold 4 will still um, probably be discounted even more but it might be a little harder to find if you're still interested in a foldable phone uh, but you want to save some money uh, consider the fold 3 um, the Pixel Fold just came out, but that's a uh, first generation, and I don't know how well it's going to hold up, so I really can't recommend that. But um, So I'm sticking with just Samsung Folds uh, now. The Fold 3 has uh, a lot of deals on it, and uh, much cheaper than the Fold 4, probably half the price uh, I've, seen, I've seen it a lot of times. And there are a couple of differences uh, between the Fold 4 and the Fold 3, but it, not that many differences. So I'll just go through them real quick just so you know what they are. So the Fold 4 has a slightly wider front screen, which actually uh, makes it much more usable, in my opinion. Uh, and it's mostly due, uh, it's not so much uh, wider, but the bezels are thinner. So that makes the uh, front screen a little bit wider and, uh, again, more usable. But that would be up to you to decide. Uh, the Fold 4 has a better, more durable hinge, but the Fold 3 was still uh, very durable. Uh, the Fold 4 has a newer processor. Same battery size, uh, but the Fold 4 does last uh, longer because of the uh, more efficient processor that it has. And the Fold 4 has a faster wire charging, 45 watts versus the Fold 3's 25 watts. Not a deal breaker, but uh, just letting you uh, know about that. The software the same, is the same, and when the Fold 5 comes out, if they come out without some, any new uh, updates, any new software tweaks or whatever, the Fold 4 and the Fold 3, I'm sure we'll be getting them. Uh, but as I said, the uh, right now the software between the 3 and the 4 are the same, and uh, but you get one more year of updates with the Fold 4, most likely. The inside camera is a little harder to see on the Fold 4 compared to the Fold 3, and that's because uh, they doubled the pixel density there, but... Like I said, that's really not even that visible at all. The Fold 4 has a better primary camera and uh, does get three times zoom over the uh, two times zoom of the Fold 3. So I think the Fold 4 is a great phone. Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, look out for some deals and it hopefully will be discounted uh, even more soon. But it's been super durable, uh, super awesome using this big inside phone for all, you know, watching videos or uh, even just like I said, going through the websites and things, just having a big screen there is just great. It's like basically having a little tablet in your pocket. It does make it so I don't really reach for the tablet as much and I don't really reach for the laptop as much because I could do everything right here. Uh, it has the S Pen support in the, uh, on the main screen here, which is, you know, really just awesome writing on this big screen taking notes instead of uh, kind of typing on my laptop I just kind of handwrite them and it gets translated just fine um, the uh, small screen up here it is a little small for things but I really have no issues with it I've actually watched you know videos on this even in the in the upright mode like this so it's like a small video up here then you could read the comments down here I kind of got used to it, and it, it's just fine for me. And then uh, sometimes, like I said, I'll watch, put it like this for the video, and I'll just tilt it up like this, and, you know, I got a stand, and I just kind of go through videos like that. So really uh, just a, a great phone. For those of you that had the Fold 4, uh, if you had any issues, uh, let me know. But let me know what you think about it, and uh, see if I covered all the topics or if there's anything else to, to consider. And again, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing. It does help me a lot. Uh, you know, like it, uh, share it, all that kind of good stuff. It really does help me... Uh, you know, grow the channel, and I uh, do appreciate it. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks so much.